Oh, hi, Snapchat. It's Nathan Waters here with your daily dose of uh, future. Let's talk about housing. So I sort of read a really cool article today that triggered a thought that I've had for a while. Yeah, let's go. So I've spoken a lot about tech houses and uh, tech communes and hacker houses and even like turning entire cities into little communes of just like where everything's free and you just live there and work. I think this topic fascinates me for a few reasons. Um, I think that the inevitable trend of everyone becoming a freelancer and just kind of having the ability to roam around and work on what they want to and also my current rental situation. So in uni days, I used to live in this epic share house with five other people. Like a, a share house that was falling apart, you know, typically. It looked like a, a like something from a Slovakian Russian. Then everyone moved out, and so I had to like look for my own apartment. So I just found a two-bedroom apartment. Had a girlfriend at the time, so that was fun. Having a, an apartment with a girlfriend, really cool. Um, but now I've just got a housemate. But, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but so the reason I haven't moved out yet is because I have so much shit. Um, I haven't moved to Sydney because I have a fridge, a bed, all this other crap, couches. So this is a problem for many reasons. Uh, people stuff basically like traps them in that region, and so you you get a uh, uh, you lose the agility of the workforce and people moving around and sharing ideas and knowledge. I've always wanted rental properties to operate much like Airbnb. So you just go onto a website, you find it, you do a VR tour, and then you just book it for one day, three months, a year, two years, and then you just move in fully furnished. No bonds required, no like minimum six month lease. Or I, I had to sign like a minimum twelve month lease. Like that that's just bad for the future of humanity. It just traps people in this set way. So anyway, I've also been consulting in the real estate space for a few years now, um, and I've got a few startups. Um, and I'm actually launching one soon, House.ai, uh, which hopefully will democratize real estate eventually. So the article that triggered this thought today was um, a startup called Rome, which basically uh, they buy up a bunch of like co-working, uh, co-living spaces around the world, and they're looking to have 10 by the end of next year. And it sounds like pretty much exactly that whole tech housing commune place. So you pay 500 bucks a week, and you can just move and live anywhere in the world uh, between their different network of sites. But it's, it's not scalable at the most, it's still small. I mean, how cool would that be to, own? to basically own nothing but uh, a bunch of clothes in a, in a backpack and a laptop and just be able to like, move anywhere in the world and just instantly transition and transpose yourself to a different place. Another reason these commune places are good is that um, when you go there, you basically you instantly make friends. It's not like you've gone into a random city and you go like, suddenly like, you go to meetup groups or something to find other people. I mean, that transition from living in a, like, either a share house or a uni house or like, on campus to going into the real world and getting an apartment or going, going into a, another share house is brutal, man. I've always thought it's depressing that apartment blocks don't have communal areas. Like, it'd be great to have a skyscraper's tower where everyone has their own individual apartment, but every level has a communal bar or a cafe or some, just some communal area. And on a broader critique of the whole real estate industry, I think something has to change. Like, at the moment, housing prices are just stupid. The government are creating laws that just artificially inflate the price. You've got, like, negative gearing, all this sort of crap. It's pretty clear that young people are probably never going to own a house. Maybe, maybe like, 10, 20% of them might. Um, and our, our own Prime Minister actually had a gaffe recently saying that uh, parents should just buy their kids' houses. So here's a kind of radical thought. What I'd love to see eventually is that all housing, all real estate, all property is owned by the social commons on a blockchain DIO. So it's owned by an AI and it's rented out. So everyone owns it, but it rents it. Because isn't that just a depressing future if we're all on like a basic income and it's like, you know, 20, 20, 20, 30, and we're all like doing amazing things. It's a peer-to-peer -peer economy and yet we're having to pay like half our salaries in rent. Because I mean, if you look at the basic needs of humanity, like, you know, shelter, uh, food, water, electricity, internet, um, all of those things are commodities. The problem is we've turned shelter into an investment market, like a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an investment vehicle and so property investors are buying up these things, not giving a shit about giving affordable housing to people, but making In a rational same world, property and houses should be worth nothing more than the materials and labour that went into it, minus the condition and age, plus the demand on location. That's it. Instead we're in this insane world where one, two, three bedroom houses are going for over a million dollars because there's laws in place that <laughs> incentivize that and because people know that they can flip it down the line. But you can't just magically change how the world works overnight. So one idea I had for this whole blockchain-based social commons thing is that uh, retirees and people who like own that property, you could offer them a great deal. So let's say you're a baby boomer in your 60s and you own a, a say, an apartment worth uh, half a million dollars. What this system could do is actually offer you uh, more than market price. It could offer you $600,000 to buy that off you. So this, ha this housing DAO on the blockchain offers you $600,000 for a property that's worth $500,000 now. The catch is it pays it out over 10, 20 years. In other words, it'll offer to buy that property, that $500,000 property off you for $600,000, but it'll pay you $60,000 uh, every year for 10 years to buy it off you. But in return, you get an extra perk. The perk is that you get access to live anywhere in the world at, in any of the properties that this system owns. So it's almost like a, a timeshare slash Airbnb, so you can book it any time and move. Like, not everyone would take up that offer, but I think a lot of retirees might. Like, that's a pretty cool idea. Like, sell your property, and then you basically get to live anywhere in the world, go on a holiday to thousands of different properties. 
especially too if this, this if this AI can actually like monitor the market and find you know properties when they're low, like at the perfect place to buy them, um, and then adds them into the social comments. So everyone owns these properties. Everyone. And then if you can work out how to turn this DIO into a, like a self-running, perpetuating thing, um, you know, maybe 20, 30 years from now, all property in the world might be owned by the social commons and anyone can freely move around. And like to me, that's a far more optimistic future that I'd love to live in. So let us know, snappy your thoughts, our future. Uh, would you live in, this, in a system like this? Any ideas? Uh, how, would you, how do you want property to work? Let us know. <laughs> Where am I?